Welcome to Auto Off Topic. What's going on, Brad? Oh, not too much, Andrew. How are you doing today? I'm great. We've got a guest tonight. Uh, Excellent. It's, it's our, the first guest we've had in a while. It's the first guest we've had in a while and the first guest of 2022. Yes, which we promised at the end of 2021 that 2022 would be full of guests. Not every episode, but a lot more than last year. So we're uh, making good in that promise right now. So we've got Jeremy Nutt from Ratty Muscle Cars on YouTube. Yep. Jeremy, how are you? Yeah. I'm great. How are you guys? So you were actually on, I had to look this up, way Uh back in 2017. Really? It was that long ago? It was episode 15. That is crazy. that was early. Mystery Engine. Um, Yeah. It's actually February 8th, 2017 is when the episode went out. So So that dates two things. Yeah. It dates that episode. And it dates how long I've been lazy and not fixed the car I bought from Jeremy. And he's been <laughs> <laughs> so the other fun thing too, I, I went back and I listened to it real quick and I read the description. Like Brad had a cold, I had a cold, and Jeremy was down here in our basement. <laughs> like, wow. Like what a what a crazy pre pandemic thing to have a podcast yeah, totally. with two people with colds. <laughs> yeah. Weird. Oh, that's funny. And, well, it, and like it didn't, we didn't kill it, him then. Right, and it didn't even occur to us like it, that it, at the time, at least. I don't think that was even a thought in my mind. No, no, he probably said, "Hey, we have colds. It's up to you whether you want to come or not." And you're like, "Whatever, it's cold." <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's fine. Yeah, it's February. <laughs> right, everybody has a cold in February. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Excellent. So, um, I didn't make Jeremy promise not to yell at me this episode. So, if he does, that's what it's about. Uh, we uh, recently did the episode where we did the you know Project Car State of the Union speech. Yep. Uh, and you heard about my, my woes and upsetness at myself for not completing some projects. And uh, one of them is, again, as is yearly tradition now, uh, the Gallant VR4 that I purchased from him. And uh, he was the best seller of all time and helped procure and purchase another engine <laughs> for it for me. And uh, I will promise you that that motor is in good shape, covered in oil or wrapped in plastic inside a house, not even in a garage. Like it's perfect. Yeah, everything everything is ready to go. It's just waiting for me to get the time to do it. And yeah, obviously, uh, moving across country is not, um, I would say, the best time to try to put an engine together. But it is sitting there. All the parts are there. Everything's wrapped up, cut, coated in oil, and the machine work is 100% done on it. So yeah, that's it's nice. All ready to go. Yeah. I'm really hoping that you keep it long enough where I can justify buying it back from you. And then I can have it again, and then it'll just be full circle. And then well, maybe a the few deal. years later, we s- I'll sell it back to you, and we can just basically pass it back and forth every few years. So Andrew and I did that with the car a few years ago, and it worked out pretty well. So maybe we can okay. talk about that. But okay. here's the deal. Uh, this year, I have uh, focused on a couple of individual projects. Uh, yep. Obviously, that one is still in Massachusetts, and I am out here in Arizona. Uh, but I've had some conversations with some friends. Um, and there's one friend who is volunteering to, uh, bring it to his house Ooh. once he finishes up something he's currently working on. Um, and I might book a trip out there. And, uh, if I do, when I do, I will, uh, certainly give you a buzz too. I and mean, you can come up and, uh, we can yeah. have a, a weekend party of assembling that thing as a, as a group. Yeah. That would be super fun. Like, at least yeah. get it to the point where it can run enough to go on a truck. Right. And then it can be brought to you. And then once it's. Yeah, I think once we get it in the car, get a trans in the car with the new clutch, with the motor running and going in it, um, it's going to be a lot easier to do all of those things. I have a turbo for it here in my garage. I have a down yeah, pipe for I, it. I would I yep. would really like, and I think it would be great content-wise for us um, to get that thing put together in one trip and uh, do another trip where I go through a bunch of little stuff. And then uh, eventually, maybe by the end of next fall, before next winter, uh, make a cross-country trip in the car. That would be awesome. Yeah, I think that's a good content building exercise, Andrew, which I was discussing with some other friends. Um, Andrew, we can talk about after the episode, but uh, it's definitely... uh, uh, it's definitely in the in it's definitely in the works this year. And if I don't fix it by this year, um, I, it's just it's it's bad. It's I can't, <laughs> I can't I can't. It's it's as as we talked about in our other episodes. Part of you know mental health is clearing your head, and clearing my yes. head of that project is a huge 
<laughs> stumbling block. And that's, this is the year. And I, I've, I've said a few things before, but I mean, I'm in a position now that I haven't been before and this mm. is going to be the time it happens. So, yeah. So fingers crossed. If not, you can buy it at the end of the year for pennies on the dollar. That sounds perfect. Count me in. All right. Ev- everybody heard that. I can yep. always sell it to Jeremy for pennies on the dollar <laughs> just to yeah. get it out of my life at that point. But it, it's one of the few cars that I, I think about a lot that I have owned and I would like to own again at some point. There's a few cars in my past. Now I've owned like 40 or 50 cars. So this like, that means a lot. And the ones that are like, I would love to have back again, but some of them don't exist anymore are my 90 uh, Eclipse GSX. That is now in 10 million pieces, probably turned into beer cans. And the Galant VR4 is another one. And then my Dodge Ram D50 with the 4G63 turbo in it. Those, yep. and that unfortunately has been chopped up a million different ways. And it's no longer something I would even want back. Um, right. But the way that I sold it, I would have loved to get it back again now that it's been, I don't know, eight years or something like that. Yeah. And, and that story right there is part of the reason that I don't like selling things. Yes, exactly. Everybody so, ruins them. <laughs> yeah. The fact that yeah. I have your Gallant and it's still in the same condition it was <laughs> when you sold it to me uh, should uh, help you out a little bit there. Yeah, it, so. it, it makes me feel good knowing that it, it's at least in an enthusiast's hands and it hasn't like it hasn't been chopped up into a million pieces and destroyed. No, no and it won't be. Yeah. So that's definitely. I, I, said, I, I just said if I don't finish it, it will be sold back to you for <laughs> pennies on the dollar. Yeah. So yeah, we'll make it happen. That's definitely well, yeah. a problem with old DSMs that we like, though, because yes. they usually end up getting parted out yeah. after you've. Spend a bunch of time on them and make them nice. Somebody else buys them yep. and ruins them. Yep. Yeah, I had a Plymouth yeah. Laser, too, that I really liked. And that was a front-wheel drive car, so I was, like, less attached to it. But it was a ton of fun. It was a 90 turbo, sure. five-speed, front-wheel drive. It was a ton of fun to drive. Um, but it, it it was kind of beat up when I had it. it. It had, like, dents in the quarter panels and stuff. And it wasn't that nice of a car, but it was a ton of fun. I, I definitely missed that one, too. And that's the problem I have with my current DSM. I have that that front wheel drive as well, and it's not even a mm-hmm. turbo; it's just a four G car. Yep. And again, so it's not fast, but it's a fun car to drive. It's been reliable. It's been all over the country. Yep. Uh, I've done a ton of road trips in it. But at the end of the day, I'm like, you know what? I could move that along. It would help free up some cash to fix some other things. But I don't want to sell it because I don't want it to be the next person's going to say, <laughs> "Oh, this thing needs a turbo swap." Yeah. And it needs an all wheel drive swap, and both of those things are not super simple to do. And yep. they'll take the car apart and it'll never get put together and it'll wind up in a junkyard. So mm-hmm. I have that same. Yeah. That's why I haven't sold it yet. Every time I go to sell it, I'm like, nah, I can't because <laughs> somebody's going to ruin it. Yeah. You always have so. to find like the perfect buyer for a car like that. Yeah, exactly. So you want to buy another one? No, I'm kidding. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So speaking of, anyway, yeah, speaking of content, uh, I don't, yeah. Jeremy, I don't think way back in 2017, did you have your YouTube channel? I think I did, but I wasn't doing anything with it. Like I, like I think I started it in like 2009 or something like that, and I put up a couple of like terrible videos um, about DSM wiring, and then I just like forgot about my channel for ten years. Okay. Um, and then I kind of got active with it again, probably maybe 2020, if I had to guess. It might have been a COVID thing, actually. Now that I think about it. Um, but yeah, it's been growing really well recently. So we, you must have renamed it. It must've been something else. Yeah. So I think originally it was, it was my, (laughs) this is like, this is kind of embarrassing and I'm not actually, I'm not sure if it's embarrassing or not, but it's a sign of the times. So my original name for that channel was 4G63 Mighty Max because that was my name on every forum for like 15 years. Um, because I had a 4G63 Mighty Max. Um, and that was my original YouTube channel name. But then I started doing all this other content with like, you know, 64 Impalas and RX-7s and a bunch of other stuff and just general wiring videos. And I decided I should change my name. So I changed my YouTube name to be Jeremy N. And then I was like, well, like several months pass and I was like, maybe I shouldn't put my name on the internet like that. What if some like creep like finds me and like hunts me down and like makes me into like a serial killer victim? 
So then I was like, I'll change my name so nobody knows it's Jeremy N. And I changed it to Ratty Muscle Car. So now it's Ratty Muscle Car uh, YouTube. And I also have the domain name that goes right to my YouTube channel. So I figured it was a good name to go with because I was working on a um, basically a Ratty Muscle Car at the time. And I made like 80 videos of it or something like that. So it fit kind of my uh, my general genre of what I do. So I don't think you should be too embarrassed because, you know, everybody has heard the story of, you know, my <laughs> yes. name is the same as it's my first forum name back in the day. Right. And places where I have changed it, I have literally changed it to like Brad D 81, you know, like nothing yeah. creative beyond that. So I think we all are around a similar age, have a similar story of uh, yeah. finding our way around the internet. But yep. Ratty Muscle Car definitely is a much more catchy name and people will remember it. It is. So, yeah. In in fact, it's uh, much easier to find your videos by just yes. typing in Ratty Muscle Car into the search bar now. So Yes, absolutely. So, so obviously everybody should start by ending this episode and going right to YouTube <laughs> and uh, searching your videos because there is some heavy content on there, um, mostly related to Ratty Muscle Cars or Ratty 60s cars in general because that's yep. other than your Mitsubishi stuff, that's kind of your thing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I I, I mix up uh, like really I'm a I'm a DSM Mitsubishi guy, but also a like old car hot rod guy. So it's it's a weird like melting pot of stuff that I do on my YouTube channel and just in in general in life. Like I I work on motorcycles and really anything with an engine. Um, I'm happy working on it. I, I'm not really loyal to any specific brand or or model or yeah, anything which, like that. Which I think is all of us. We, we have our yep. sp- specifics that we are, I don't want to say experts, but we're more knowledgeable and, and yeah. we'll probably spend more time doing, but we're uh, pretty multifaceted when it comes to interests in mechanical yep. objects. So Yeah, absolutely. I think, yeah, we're all in that same kind of boat. So yep. anyway, I remember your YouTube channel kicking off kind of big uh, because you had a yellow... 70? 72. Yep. 72 Le Mans. Yes. Le Mans? Le Mans. Le Mans? <laughs> Le Mans? Pont, uh, yeah, it's a Pontiac, though. So it's Pontiac is a Le Mans. Yeah. Le Mans. It's a Le Mans. Yeah. Yep. So you had one of them, them uh, is that A body? Uh, yes. Yes, it is. So, yeah, so same as a Chevelle mm-hmm. or a Buick Skylark. Yep. Or a. Old Cutlass. Old Cutlass, yep, exactly. Those are the, the, the four main ones that came with that, and they're pretty hot right now. They are. Yeah, so I, you had um, one. Or I had definitely one. Or did. Had one? had one, I sold it, yeah. Okay. So that car was kind of a weird story. Um, have, have I told you guys this story before? I don't want to bore anybody with my weird story. Well, you didn't have the car in 2017. Okay, perfect. So last time you told <laughs> the audience about anything you had going on, you didn't have that car. And that car is kind of what grew your YouTube channel, I think. Yeah. Because you basically took a car that was a, a typical New England daily driver, uh, which is to say it has the lightweight New England <laughs> racing quarter panels. Right. Um, and the speed holes around the windows and uh, the trunk floor that doesn't support anything. Right. Uh, and instead of, you know, fixing all that and making it perfectly sound, you decided to put an LS in it. Right. Yeah, that was... So, that's yeah, tell us the story of that car, because that's a wild car, and it's a neat car, and yeah, I was happy when I started spinning tires in your driveway. Yeah, th- that was definitely a fun time. So the, the weird part about that car is that that car lived a few miles down the street from me, like in the bushes for... I don't know, probably 10 or 12 years. I used to drive by it like every weekend and I would see this car sitting in the bushes and I would tell my wife, my girlfriend at the time, I was like, I'm going to own that car. I'm going to go knock on their door and I'm going to try and buy that car. And she'd be like, why do you want this car that's buried in the bushes? Um, And like every time I'd go by and be like, oh, I need to have that car. I need to have that car. And it looked like a, a wreck. Like, it is a mess of a car. It was a 72 Le Mans. It's bright yellow, but everything's rusted and rotted on it. It has, like, rotted quarter panels. Um, the, there's, like, rusty spots all over it. And then one day I go to drive by it, and it's gone. And I was like, no! And I basically procrastinated too long 
and somebody else got the car. So then I was like kicking myself for months about how I should have knocked on the door and I should have tried to buy the car and I didn't and I missed out. So then I, at the time I had this motorcycle, which was a, an 88 Honda Hawk GT NT 650, which is a really oddball motorcycle. And I had done all kinds of custom stuff to it over the years because I had it for like 15 years and I made this crazy looking custom motorcycle out of it and i was bored with it i never rode the thing so i put it up on craigslist and i made an ad that said i will trade this for something cool and wouldn't you know it some guy sends me an email and says will you trade it for a 72 le mans and i was like yeah probably send me pictures so he sends me pictures and it's the car that was sitting in the bushes and I go to look at it and yeah, sure enough, it's the same car. And this guy apparently got it from the guy who had it in the bushes and he had it for a couple, like, I don't know, maybe a year or so and kind of got overwhelmed with it, I think. And he just wanted something that he could get in or get on and it just worked. And that's what my motorcycle was. So I ended up trading my motorcycle for the Le Mans, even trade. And then I had Le Mans. So then I started making my YouTube videos on it. And I ended up putting a six liter LS engine in it with a turbo 400 transmission. Um, and it still had the, it had the, um, the LS fuel injection. Um, and then I kind of went through the car and made it somewhat reliable, I guess. Ish. Yeah, you didn't kind of, you didn't make it pretty, but you made it. Yeah. Safe esque. Yeah. So you could reliable esque. <laughs> Yeah, so you could get in and turn the key and it would start every single time. It, it ran really, really good. Um, and then I did a whole bunch of metal work to the back window because I couldn't keep the car outside because all around the rear window was all rotted out. And anytime it rained, all the water would pool inside the car. Right. And then it would roll right out the floors because there had rot holes in the floors. And that was just kind of getting old. So I decided to pull the rear window out and I fixed the whole, I basically replaced all kinds of metal in the back of the car. So there's like a package shelf uh, under the rear window, which I replaced that entirely. And then I replaced some other metal that kind of surrounds it. And then I cut out all the metal around the rear window that was rotted. And I fabricated all new pieces for around the window and I welded all that in. And then I got it all looking good, primed it, painted it. And then I put the car up for sale. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I missed that. Andrew, did you, I don't remember when the car was for sale. Do you? I think all of a sudden it was like, I haven't seen any videos. About <laughs> yeah, I don't remember getting anymore. sold, but. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of it, uh, snuck it out from under us. It well, was what kind was of, the reason for selling it? Well, it was kind of like a spur of the moment decision where I, I was, I had worked on it so much for, um, in like a, I don't know, maybe a two or three month window. I worked on it like constantly. And that rear window took me a long time to do because I made all of the metal around the window and a lot of the metal below the window as well. Um, yeah, I just fabricated it all can, myself. Probably not a panel you can buy. It's like a lower quarter or a door scanner or a fender. Like it's, it's yeah, like, exactly. It's a lot more. That's like the worst part to have to replace in the car. Anything else yeah. Like, oof, oof. Yeah. It's a ton of work. Um, so I just got kind of like burnt out on the car. So when I was done doing all the rear window work, I I had the car a little bit. I actually took it to a car show locally. Um, and a lot of people really got a kick out of it there because, I mean, it's it's very much a ratty muscle car, but it has it sure. had a really nice engine in it. Um, so, yeah, I just kind of got bored with it. And it was taking up space in my garage and I just couldn't find the motivation to work on it. So I was like, eh, I'll put it up for sale and see if somebody wants to buy it. So sure enough, I put it up for sale and somebody came and offered me a fair price for it at the time. That was pre-COVID prices. So it wasn't like, it wasn't the crazy money that things are going for now. So it seems like a giveaway price now. Yeah, now it's a, now yeah. it's essentially free. Um, yeah. And he had these big plans to basically take it right from my house to a body shop to have all the body totally redone. 
because that's really what it needed to be like a nice car. The engine right. drivetrain stuff was all sorted out really well. Um, the interior could have used some work. Um, well, and I, then the I body. I remember watching the videos and thinking like that's like the ideal New England muscle car. It is, yeah. Because it was rusty enough to the point where you didn't really care too much about it. You could hit yep. it every year with some POR 15 and some mm-hmm. undercoating and just drive it all year. Yeah. And not worry about ruining this pristine old car because, I mean, somebody else already ruined it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was, it was pre ruined. Like, yeah, and right. I'm, I'm not saying abuse the car, trash the car, you know, crush the car, put it in a demolition derby, but you still enjoy it and you use it and not, and not worry about it. And I, yeah, I was a little, a little envious of that because I've never really had a vintage car that I don't care about enough. Yeah. To not drive in the winter. Yeah, and that was that was what was so beautiful about this car was I didn't care about it. And I could have driven it to any grocery store and parked it next to all the minivans and not worried sure. at all. Um sure. so yeah, it was it was really nice in that aspect. And the funny thing was, like the quarter panel and the bottom of one of the doors were were pretty rotted. But underneath the car, the frame was actually still really nice. Like there was no rust or rot anywhere on the frame. And like the suspension was all in really good shape. So I don't really know what, what the reason was that it rotted out the way it did. Um, but the chassis and like drivetrain and suspension of that car was all really, really nice. And just certain aspects of it were rusty and made it, made it seem kind of worse than it was. Right. Well, it was neat looking and it was yellow. And, Definitely. Uh, that's what a riding muscle car should be. Just yeah. kind of loud and obnoxious and yep. something you just go out and do burnouts in your neighborhood and everybody's mad at you. <laughs> yeah. And it had the perfect stance too. I loved the stance of that car. Yeah. That was it was cool. perfect. Yep. It was cool. So was the intention to replace it with something else or is that just kind of a... <sighs> no, the intention... So my thought was that if I got rid of that car, I would have had a little bit of money that I could put into my 64 Impala convertible. And that's my lifelong project that I bought when I was 15. And I think I, I think I might've touched on that car in the last podcast episode that I was on. Yes. So, so yeah, that car is something I'll never get rid of. So I figured I would have that Le Mans money to put into the Impala, maybe get a paint job or uh, interior or something like that. But then I came across a different vehicle. (laughs) Uh, do we want to touch on that one or? Sure. A hundred percent. That's what we're, that's what we're here for. We're here, we're here to get the, uh, the skinny on everything Jeremy's scoop. been up to. Okay. And, uh, and promote your channel as, you know, best yeah. we can. And this, cause this new car is, uh, it's going to take attention away from your other 64. Impala I know. Car, for sure. I know. So, so the, the newest vehicle is something I was, I wasn't, actively looking for like i sold the le mans and i was like well i'll just kind of put the money into my impala and then i made the mistake of cruising through craigslist one night and my thought is that most people have moved to facebook marketplace and the good deals are now on craigslist because only a few people list there that's my theory you're kind of you're kind of not wrong we've kind of arrived at that too because you you have to pay five bucks now to to list on craigslist yeah, exactly. So there's like it kind of eliminated a lot of the jokers. Yep. And um, I mean that's where I found that Q45 was Craigslist. It wasn't Facebook. It was Craigslist. Yeah. So I think I think that's the key. And I, I hate to I hate to give out my secrets like that, but because now maybe I'll ruin the whole thing. But I think that there's some good deals on Craigslist now. And I made the mistake of looking on Craigslist, and there was a '64 Impala wagon. And I was like, oh, man, I love wagons so much. And this one is a 64 that matches my convertible. How can I not go look at it? So I can can tell you a few ways. (laughs) I know. I wouldn't listen to them either. And I would go look at it, too. So I'm the wrong person to say. (laughs) Yeah, I'm throwing all uh, sense of responsibility out the window. So I went to go look at it. And it was pretty rusty. And so just to let out all the secrets, it was, it was listed for a thousand dollars and it's a four door wagon. Uh, it's a six passenger car. They did make nine passenger cars as well, but this one is a six. So it doesn't have the rear rear seat. Um, 
it had no engine, no transmission, and most of the nose was taken off of the car and it was in pieces. So it was perfect. So I, I kind of like looked at the car and I was like, ah, I don't know. It's kind of a big project. I don't really know if I want to take on something this big. And then the owner was like, will you give me 500 for it? And I was like, yes, <laughs> I will. So he talked himself down to 500 bucks and then I ended up buying the car for 500 bucks and I brought it home and <laughs> I didn't tell my wife what it was. And she knew that it had four doors and it was old and she was disappointed <laughs> to say the least. So then when I brought it home, She's like, oh, it's a wagon. It's actually not that bad. And I was like, oh, well, thank you. I'm, oh, I'm glad. <laughs> yeah. So it was like a nice relief because I thought I was going to be like living in the wagon now. Um, right. Which after seeing it, I would not want to do that. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and my wife is very supportive of all of my car endeavors. So when I heard that she was like, oh, it's a wagon. And she said it in a really positive way. I was like, oh, that's awesome. I'm, I'm like thrilled that she was like on board with the wagon project. Um, so yeah, I got it home and I kind of dug into it. And now I'm at a point where I am going to be cutting all of the floors out of it because they're all trash. And I'm going to buy a one piece floor pan that goes from the firewall to the back of the back seat. Okay. And it comes with all the floor supports, the inner rocker panels, and it's basically like all the floors, except for the like rear wagon section of the floors. And I'm going to install that, and then I'm going to rebuild the frame, because the frame is kind of rotted in some areas too. And then I'm not sure what I'm going to do about the drivetrain yet. I have I have two 4G63 engines in my, in my garage, <laughs> and I have an LS engine in my garage, and they are all on engine stands. So my thought is a 4G63 and a 64 wagon would just be really cool. I support all of this. How about, to a, a, power glide. How about a 4G64? You know, I'm not opposed to that either, except I don't have one. I have yeah. two 4G63s. It just goes with the theme. I know. That would be really Oh, I get really it. 64 fitting. Impala, 4G64. Yeah. yeah that would be pretty uh, nice. The four, Slightly the, bigger. So, Yep. You could call it the. Uh, yeah, you have to do it now because then the car is named the four G six four. Oh, I could have a license plate too. Yeah, so oh. we, we just ruined that for you. I'm sorry. Oh, um, this is good. Um, I am all on board with muscle car. Well, not muscle car because I. The definition of muscle car we've talked about before is a little broad sometimes. Yeah, uh, yep. muscle car era. I'm, I'm I am on board with muscle car era vehicles with weird engine swaps. Mm-hmm. Um, Same. You know, cur- currently there's that fairly popular one on the internet that's the 68 charger with the 2jz in it yes Um, definitely and that kind of thing that it it ruffles some feathers but that's not why i'm into it Mm -hmm. um i'm into it because it's different and it's cool and it's unexpected yeah i mean in the end what differences make because there's there are going to be 10 other cars at the car show with ls swap so Right. Yeah, weird weird engine swaps are cool, and I I think on top of it, the other thing is it doesn't matter what you do, even if you piss off a purist, because mm-hmm. you literally pull this car out of the woods, and its next step yes. was going to be recycling. And yeah, exactly. You're doing something better with it than that. Yeah, so. and that's that was one of the selling points for this car. I mean, not only was it a five hundred dollar Impala, and I was like, heck yeah, but the the thought. Uh, the thought process that I can do whatever I want to this and it really doesn't matter because I'm bringing this car from the back from the edge of like a scrapyard. Right. Um, it, it made me feel all warm and cozy knowing that I, I could do no wrong with this car, no matter what engine no. I put in it, no matter what I do to it. Um, no, you're, you're, you're literally saving something from disappearing forever. Like you're saving it from yeah. extinction. So yep. it's yours. You want an electric swap it? Great. Perfect car for <laughs> right. it. Right. You want a 4G swap it? Great. Perfect car for it. You want to yep. put a propane powered forklift <laughs> motor in it? Who cares? You, you're making <laughs> yeah. the car work and drive down the road. And I'm yep. I'm totally cool with that. Yeah, exactly. Um, speaking of which, propane powered forklift motors are also Mitsubishi based. So <laughs> yeah. that'll work very well Good as well. Good point. So. <laughs> yeah. But no, that, that's a, it's, it's super cool, man. And uh, I, I watched the first video uh, and I wasn't sold. Yep. <laughs> um, I watched the second video and you had the new doors on it now. 
Yes. Uh, and I'm sold. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's amazing what a couple small things will do. Right. Um, and I know that it's an Impala, so sheet metal mm-hmm. like the floors is easy. Yep. I also know that it's a wagon, so sheet metal like the rear floors is not easy. Yes. <laughs> but at yeah. least the uh, bulk of the parts are available. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, that was another selling point on the car. It came with solid southern doors. So yeah, five hundred dollars doors right there. Right, exactly. Like, how could I possibly not buy this car? Yeah, well, again. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> I have cars that I should not own <laughs> and should have given up on a long time ago. And right. haven't. Was it like um, sitting in a field somewhere? Is that why the bottom was all rotted out? So the legend has it that so. I bought it from somebody who had it for like a year and a half and it sat in a parking lot that whole time and the parking lot was going to be repaved. So they needed to move this car off of the pavement somewhere. So that's why he put it up for sale. So, but before he had it, he bought it from a guy who allegedly raced this car and took the engine and transmission out of it and then just parked the car in the backyard somewhere where it sat for 20 years. So it has Edelbrock stickers on the original doors. So there might be some truth to it. I don't know. Yeah, to define raced though, because there's no yeah, evidence right. of anything in the car that's uh, <laughs> very any true. legitimate race car. Very true. You're talking like a Star Speedway spectator drag car here? <laughs> Maybe. Or, uh, or what do we got? It's definitely it, it's possible. Yeah, safe to say it won't be raced again. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, not not for a while at least. Yeah, it's it's super cool, and uh, like I said, I wasn't on board, and I've uh, I've crossed the threshold now. Seeing yep. the new wheels, learning about the difference in door handles between a uh, yeah you know, an Impala and a what Bel Air, I guess. What they yeah, a Bel Air and a Biscayne, apparently. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, I had I'd no say, idea. Yeah, I don't think anybody did. Nobody ever probably thought about it. <laughs> right, exactly. You know, it's never been <laughs> it's one of those things that I'm sure there's somebody out there who's an Impala expert who's like, yeah, mm-hmm. I got it. But Right. Yeah, no. I think uh, Andrew's got a good question here. So let's... Uh, yeah, uh, right I mean, I, I was just saying, often people say to buy the best car possible, yes. but why not buy the worst? Yeah. Right. That's that's what I tend to do for some reason. I'm just attracted to the really, I'm, I'm attracted to the worst possible cars, and I don't know why that is. Because like I don't even have aspirations of buying a nice car at any point. Like I, if if somebody gave me the opportunity to buy like a really nice '64 Impala, I don't. I'm not even sure I would want that over my mediocre one that I have now. It's just like it's not in in my being to have like a really nice car that I can wax. I don't know why that is. It's just bad DNA, I guess. It's, it's stressful owning a nice car. Yeah. That might um, be it. I'd rather be yeah, welding I, than waxing. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's a, Ooh, that's a good phrase. Sticker idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You need to get that on the sticker. Yep. Yep. Andrew put that one in. The sticker. <laughs> trademark. Yeah. Uh, trademark. trademark. Yeah. DM, 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 DM. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I find it's more stressful to own a nice car, obviously, um, yeah. because you're worried about it all the time. You're worried about doing things to mm-hmm. it. You know, I put a ding in my Cressida not that long ago, and it's infuriating because it's like your eyes go right to it every time. Oh, was yeah. it the good side? Uh, it is the good side. Ooh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah, stupid drive throughs um, It's not one of the freshly painted panels. It's the, the quarter panel, which was not painted. But it, fine. I'll yeah. tell a quick embarrassing story. Side sidebar. Quick sidebar. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I went to a Dunkin' Donuts drive through the other day. Every now and again, you get that little twinge of the taste of home. You want some bad coffee. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I had that. So I went there. Um, also, they've been advertising this new food item they have, which we all know that Dunkin' Donuts food items are about one element away from being plastic. <laughs> um, however, they've been advertising it. And wouldn't you know it, they got me. So I wanted to try it. Was it the so, Stroop Waffle Donut? No, I can't have anything with gluten. So they have these okay. new uh, omelet kind of looking bagel things. Oh, okay. Made of egg. It's, well, nice. whatever to be. Egg that they have. Yeah. Anyway, they're, they're delicious. Don't get me wrong. But mm-hmm. the frustrating part is I was pulling out of the drive through and there's an exit and an entrance. And there was a car coming in the entrance. 
and he wasn't moving for me to get out of his way. He was all screwed up. So I had to go out the exit. And when I did, I hadn't even looked at the exit when I pulled into the drive through. So I didn't see the curb that went Aww. beyond the end of the drive through. So as I turned, I turned too tight and my wheel and tire went up on top of it, which I was like, all right, I'll just go slow and come down off of it. So I went slow and I came down off of it. I didn't like hit the, hit the wheel or curb the wheel. It was literally just the, you know, the tire hit it. But when I came down off of it, I bashed the bottom of the quarter panel on top of the curb. Oh. Yeah. That so hurts. It hurt a lot. Yeah. But if I was in a car like the Colt that doesn't have nice paint and has dents here and there, it would have been like, well, that sucks. No big deal. Moving on. Mm-hmm. But this bothers. It, it, again, the majority of people will never see it. Mm-hmm. It's the bottom of the quarter. I put some touch-up paint on it, and I bent it back to most. It's like the pinch weld pretty much went out of shape. Mm-hmm. Um, but it just it frustrates me that to know it's yeah. there, and I'm super mad now at the guy in the Acura MDX who was ignoring the signs and came in the entrance. Oh, sorry, excuse me, came in the exit and then was blocking my way. So I had to make like a weird maneuver in the way the parking lot wasn't designed for me to drive through. So anyway, yeah, frustration. Now, now you're gonna give every Acura MDX the evil eye when you see them. It's tiring after giving all the uh, Nissan Altima's the evil eye all day, so <laughs> I have to, I have to stop somewhere. Right. Maybe if another MDX driver takes me off, I'll move on to MDXs as well. But between Pontiac Grand Ams and Nissan Altima's, my my stink yeah. eye is a little tired. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. So that's that's the point. Like, like ratty ratty junk is is more fun sometimes than nice cars. And don't get me wrong, this there's there's a, a place in the world for everything. Yeah, and absolutely. We all like both. And I own some cars I can polish, and I own some cars that polish just sticks to all the cracks in the paint. So, <laughs> yeah. And uh, I generally prefer that. Right. You know, I'm uh, I'm interested to try a new product that Andrew I sent to Andrew the other day. It's a, a clear coat for patina that's supposed to be pretty easy to use. So, cool. That should be fun. And that's next. So, time. it's actually made for patina? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, and it's it's literally a wipe on product. I don't want to say too much about it yet because I haven't tried it. So I don't want to like okay. support their business. It's not very good, but right. if it works out, we'll, you'll hear about it here first. Yeah, <laughs> if it works well, it might be a good idea for your wagon if you wanted to keep it looking the way it yeah. did, but just preserved. Yeah, they have right. a mid gloss and a high gloss. I'll send you a link. It's uh, yeah, I've, it's pretty. The photographs are pretty impressive, and the longevity supposedly is a few years. So wow. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, I've I've ordered some. I was hoping to be here in time for this weekend for the show that's coming up this weekend, but it's not going to be. Mm-hmm. So I was going to do it in the Blue Colt, but cool. Oh well. Wow. Anyway. Does it actually make it, or allegedly, does it make it like glossy? Like, yeah, they have a like a super deep gloss one, and hmm. they have one that's like a, a matte clear. Wow. What do you put it on? Like a sponge? I don't... Like a rag? Weird. Yeah, yeah, I don't know how it works. It's like Mod Podge. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know what it is. It's like, it's like varnishing. Future floor something. wax. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Huh. So I don't know. It's interesting. And we'll, we'll talk about it more when I actually use it. But yeah. Yeah. I think all the all the garbage will get it if it works. Yeah. So, so yeah, Certainly everything in my garage. Make everything shiny, even if it's not. Right. Literal polishing turds. Oh, right. I could put it on the Montero hood. 100%. Um, I will say that I, I took your little advice here and I just went on my local Craigslist while we're talking and uh, <laughs> I can buy a running driving 63 Rambler American cool. um, about 20 miles from here for 4,500 bucks. Wow. See, that's a cool car. Yeah. Because that is something you never ever see. A 62 Imperial Crown oh, running that's, that's driving 413, 34,000 original miles with a square oh. steering wheel. Square steering wheel. Like, Oh yeah. yeah, those are awesome. Yeah. yeah, the Virgil. This is like a Virgil Exner like special. Um, and the thing, these aren't that rusty, right? They're just this car is actually nice. Fifty five hundred bucks. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Uh oh. Oh man. Yeah. It's like I don't even want to know about these cars that are near you that are not rusty. It's it's just no, if, bad. Listen, if if I hadn't just bought an eight hundred dollar <laughs> Cressida, six hundred dollar Cressida, I'd. Uh, I'd be considering this this Imperial. It's super cool. I mean, when I visited Brad, the amount of like square body pickup trucks that are out there at car shows is insane. Yeah. 
That's something I yeah. would love to have. Well, you'll have to come out for the all square body show next November when there's a literal 2,000 of them in a parking lot together. Wow. Yeah, I have big dreams of owning a 73 to 75 K5 Blazer at some point because they're full convertibles. Yep. And they're just awesome. Square body, you know obviously. When you're ready. Yeah. yeah. Chief Brody. I would just love one of those because you can get them. So it's full convertible. Plus, you have four wheel drive. Plus, you can get it with a manual transmission. Plus, obviously, V8. Um, so it's like all the best stuff. Just yeah. in a square body package. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they're yeah. not cheap anymore. No, they're so expensive. Yeah. I know where there's a really, really rusty one in this guy's backyard that's not far from me. Okay. And that sounds right up your alley. Exactly. So, and like right now, if you were to go to his house right now, the doors are open on it and they have been for years. So it's like exactly what I need. And so you can take the rusty sheet metal from the Impala <laughs> and transfer it to there. Yes. Take the rusty floors out of the Impala and weld them to the side of the K5 Blazer. Perfect. Um, so yeah, I, I, I drive, I drive by like all the time. So when I see him outside and I'm in a car that I think is appropriate to have a one-on-one conversation with a guy with a rusty K5 blazer, I'm going to stop and chat it up because you have to be in, you got to present yourself in the right way to get in to those kind of situations. Cause if you roll yeah, up in like a Mercedes or something like that, they're not even going to talk to you. But if you roll up in a, a ratty 64 Impala convertible, now we're not, now we're talking. Yeah. Don't present yourself as a flipper present yourself exactly. as somebody who just wants to save it right because yeah i'm not a flipper i want i want a convertible blazer because that is just so cool oh 65 chevelle wagon it's 350, like 50 400 trans six grand the house down the street from my house brad with the two glant vr4s that are sitting in the yard for like yeah the last five years every time i drive by in my galant yeah. i'm always looking and the, there's no nobody's ever out <laughs> yeah you know i talked to him correct i no, i don't remember when yeah, uh, so when I was there with the Eclipse, I drove by and he was working on the car. Oh. Yeah, and I stopped outside and I talked to him and he has no intention, unfortunately, of selling either of them. I haven't wow. seen them move um, in years. They have probably yeah. not moved since then, yeah. He hit the black on the road for about two days and he broke something and it's been yeah. ever since. <laughs> so. Yeah, I remember seeing it like moved and I was like, oh, it's running. And then it sat and they, they both and it was, up on like jack stands. Yeah. Wow. I, think I think he's a long black truck driver. Green. Yeah. So, anyway, yeah. No, they haven't moved in a while. I think we got way off topic there, but hey, as, <laughs> as is uh, as is the style. Yeah, that's here. what we do. Yep, it is. So, but uh, Jeremy, was there any other projects you've been working on in between the? the <sighs> Let's see. And, uh... So, sort of. So, for a short time, I had my brother-in-law's RX-7, which was so it's a '93 RX-7, and I I kind of got involved with that because he had owned the car since I think like 1998 and at the time he or in the first couple of years of owning it he did all kinds of like cool stuff to it in 1998 to early 2000s fashion so um, it had all of the fast and furious stuff. Like it had the turbo timer and the, that under the dashboard and it had the crazy gauges and all that kind of stuff. So when like a few years after that, he kind of set it aside, uh, cause he, he bought a house and he didn't have money to put into it cause it needed something done to it. And it was basically parked from, I don't know, probably around 2000 and, I don't know, 10 or 12 until like a year or two ago. And he, he was asking me about selling it. And in, in the condition it was in, it wasn't worth what it could have been worth. So he had taken the whole interior out of it because he wanted to redo the interior in a different color, but then he hadn't touched it for 10 years. So the car was like all taken apart Um, and he was talking about selling it so that he could just like have his garage space back. And I was like, well, why don't I take the car and I'll put it all back together 
and then I'll get it to be like a drivable car again. And then you can sell it and, you know, maximize the money that you're going to sell it for. So we did exactly that. I went and picked it up and brought it to my house and made a few videos on it and got it to a drivable state and all back together again. And it was then like a beautiful FDR X7 that I would like desperately love to have. But unfortunately, it was way too rich for my blood. It's worth a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You should, have, you should have bought it for the taken apart price. <laughs> I know. Well, I, I absolutely could have, but like even that was way too expensive for me. They're just worth so much money. Yeah. Um. So I ended up getting it all back together again. And then I was actually going to like restore the paint on it too, because it was painted in like, I don't know, the early 2000s. And when I got it, it had like, you know, an inch of dust on it that had like been ground into the paint for a million years. So I was going to do my best to kind of bring the paint back to life. And I was on a Facebook group asking like how professionals would do this because I don't want to bring it somewhere because it was still all apart in my garage. I just want to do it myself as best I can without ruining it. And some guy sent me a PM and said, how much do you want for that car? I'll give you cash. And I was like, well, I wasn't really ready to sell it yet, but um, I asked what he wanted to pay for it. And he offered like a really fair price for it. Um, And he was going to come up from, I think it was like New York or something like that. And I talked to my brother-in-law who owned the car and they worked out a deal and then I kind of finished putting the car together and he came up and bought the car. Like I'd never got around to the paint on it. Hmm. That's so, cool. Yeah. One less, one less step and your brother was happy it was gone probably. So yeah. And is he that, made a whole bunch more money on it. Is yeah. that the car that the HREs came off of? Um, no, that's actually my other brother-in-law that, oh. that has that one. So yeah, I have two brother-in-laws that both had FDRX sevens. Oh, okay. Yeah. Crazy. Right. So, one of those RX-7s is gone. And then my other brother-in-law, he actually had two FD RX-7s. Okay. I thought there was one in the driveway <laughs> when I went to get it, but I yes. was only there for like two minutes. So, Yeah. So within my family, there was a total of three, R- three FD RX-7s. One brother-in-law had one and the other brother-in-law had two. So the one that had one is now sold. And then the one that had two RX-7s, he... Um, he sold one of them and the one that you saw, um, had the HREs on it. So yes, that's where those wheels came from. And now he actually, he actually just recently bought a DeLorean. So now he has a DeLorean and an FDR X7. Oh, that's a weird two car garage, but (laughs) yes, it's a very weird two car garage, but absolutely awesome. One quick and unreliable and one slow and unreliable. (laughs) Yes, exactly. Yeah. It's it's pretty Both cool. Major I, design statements, so yes, absolutely. Yeah, the DeLorean was like his his lifelong goal, uh, and the FDRX7 was his passion from like you know when he, when he was a kid. He always was in RX7s his whole life. He had the FCs and the FBs and FDs. He had like all of the RX7s you could imagine, and um, yeah. He's, yeah, he's most people's lifelong yeah. goal is the FD now. Yes, absolutely. The DeLorean, but I know, yeah. Oh, well, well, now he's got yes. both, so he he's got it covered. Yeah, yeah I had a former coworker who had a pair of DeLoreans, so I guess it could be worse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> still good. <laughs> you, you know what was funny though? He told me the other day. So he started. Um, I guess that there's some like part of the roof that rusts out. It's like the only part on the car that's not stainless. Huh. And well, the chassis on them aren't stainless, and the whole backbone is all regular steel. Yeah, that's what like I'm a, learning. Just like a, yeah, just like a Corvette. Corvette's a fiberglass. They don't rust. Yeah, but everything the fiberglass is bonded to is yep. steel, and they do rust. Yeah, so right in between the two doors on the roof, there's this like metal brace, and that metal brace rusts. And so he has the whole car apart because this winter, like just recently in the past few weeks, Um, cause he was replacing that brace with a stainless steel one. And he was, he was showing me the other day that while he had the car apart, he was, you know, buying this piece and that piece from the kind of like newly 
reminted DeLorean company that I think is in Texas now. Yeah, they're in Texas. Yep, they're in Texas. And he was showing me a couple of parts that he bought for it, and they were really reasonably priced parts. Like they were like half the price that I expected them to be. Hmm. Um, like he bought a, I think it was like the grill that goes like behind the windshield wipers or something like that. Some sort of cowl vent. And it was like $70 and it's brand new NOS stuff from 1982. And I, I just can't fathom why it is such a reasonably priced item for a DeLorean, but apparently they are. There is some probably be- agreement that like the reason why the cars are well supported is because it was in back to the future. Like if it hadn't been such a memorable car, mm-hmm. maybe wouldn't have been that well supported now. But nobody yeah. would care about it at all. Yeah. I mean, right. cause it was, it was, I mean, let's, let's face it. It was a flop in every sense of the word <laughs> until that movie gave it like cult status. Yeah. Right. You know, and that's, I, I, don't doubt that statement one second, Andrew. That's <laughs> yeah. And if, if I yeah. had some money in my pocket, I'm, I'm I apologize, guys. I am stuck on this Craigslist Phoenix thing right now. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of cool crap under ten grand. Yeah, I, I know. Mean, it, a sixty-two it, Falcon two-door station wagon already on air with wide and steelies for seven thousand bucks. Yeah, how can you beat it, right? Like, yeah, I mean. A 55 Chrysler Windsor two-door, $3,600. What? That might have a... Yeah. Wait, what year was it? Uh, 55. Uh, I don't know I don't know if that would have a Hemi in it. It might have a Hemi in it. Uh, it or could like a have a Hemi in it. Or like a or something like that. It's not a Hemi. It's a 301. Oh, bummer. But, I mean, the car's com- it's a complete car with no rot holes in it. Like, Yeah. I'm so, I'm so obsessed right now. I would like an early 50s car. Yeah, there's some good stuff in the early 50s. Like 50 to 54 well, you or something. Are in, you are in luck, Andrew, because there's a 53 Bel Air actually That's not a cool far from car. me right now. Mm-hmm. Eight cylinder, uh, air ride, all mm-hmm. done. It needs paint. It's flat black or you use rocket flat black. Uh, $6,000. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it's it needs an interior still, but for six grand. Yeah. Yeah, you could have a cool cruiser for ten ten thousand bucks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, fifty three anyway. was like a big year for GM. They had like all the good stuff in fifty three. Yeah, like fifty Eldorado, to 50, Skylark. Fifty to fifty four are my favorite GM cars. Yeah. So, you know, yep. fifty fifty six Ford station wagon seven thousand bucks. Cool patina. Wow. Finished interior. Like, there's some really neat stuff. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I should stop because I don't have money. <laughs> <laughs> if did you sell the Volkswagen? Because if you sell the Volkswagen, then you have money for all kinds of things. I you would think but <laughs> there's some other uh, some other financial <laughs> obligations that need yeah. to be satisfied first. Um, <laughs> right? No, I have not sold the Volkswagen. I'm waiting. I'm still waiting for the title, which is supposedly in transit. Mm-hmm. So cool. I can't sell it until I have the title. But yep, soon, very soon. I actually have a question for Andrew as well. Okay. I, I think oh. I, I know this, this could be dangerous. Flipping I script. think I, did you, I don't know if I imagined this or not, but did you post a picture of you going to a junkyard in Brookstone or Brook something, Massachusetts? Blackstone. Yeah. Blackstone. That's that what was it was. the other so, day. Okay. So I remember you posting a picture, but then I couldn't find it again when I was looking for it. And I listened to the last uh, podcast episode and you were talking about going to the junkyard and I wanted to hear how that uh, trip was. Oh, I don't. Th- I didn't talk about it yet because. Uh, oh, okay. It would have been this episode, but it then we this episode. had a oh. guest. I mean, right, I can well, talk I mean, about it real quick. I mean, I I went <laughs> I went there right. So they they did get two Q forty fives in like a week before, awesome. which yep. they had to have been from the same person and sitting on a property or something, because the one of them looked like it was sitting under a tree and it was filled with mice stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was funny because. It, I was like, two? That seems like a typo. And I looked, and I, I said this in the last episode, the VINs were different. I was like, okay, so it's definitely two different cars. Mm-hmm. One is green, one is silver. As it'd be really funny if it's the exact twin to my yep. car. And sure enough, it was. The, the silver car is, except for being a 96, which I didn't even check the VIN. Maybe the VIN was wrong. It was a 95, but who knows? Um, it's identical. Silver and black, spoiler, touring. 
Um, wow. Completely rot. Like the rockers were gone. The fender had a huge rot hole in it, but it had the turn signal I was looking for. Huh, and that's uh, awesome. Unfortunately, because it was so cold, it was like 10 degrees. I was as careful as I could be. It, it broke the little pin that pops into the headlight. Like if I could, if I could have gotten the headlight out first, but you can't because you have to remove the turn signal. Maybe I wouldn't have broke, but it broke in such a way. I think I, I plastic welded it the other day. I mm-hmm. think it'll be all right. Yep. Because the other one, the upper like wing tab is what's broken off, and I it was so thin I had trouble getting the glue to set, and it worked for a couple of days apparently, and then it fell out. So. Mm-hmm. That was super annoying, but, and then they had the other car. So I tried to pull that turn signal lamp after I broke the first one. That one also broke. So I took it anyways, but the plastic is like all crazed. You know how it gets from sitting in the sun? Yep. I was like, well, I'll just keep it anyways. Cause apparently these are hard to find. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then they had surprisingly a third Q45 there. Wow. <laughs> the 94 that had been there for over a year. And I walked up to it and of course it was hit in the left corner like right wow. in the headlight and turn signal it was just dangling out <laughs> broken i was like oh but the passenger side one had popped out and it was in perfect shape like it wasn't broken at all and i was like sweet so no not the passenger side one the driver's side one so i have a spare for the driver's side and i've got two spares now including the one i take out for the, the passenger side so wow Hopefully. Did you end up seeing any uh, Mitsubishi products there? No. Not, well, newer stuff. Yep. It was like a Mirage. There was a new Lancer, uh, which by new, it could be anywhere from an 08 to, mm-hmm. I don't know, 18, whenever they stopped making them. Yep. <laughs> yeah, way too long. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think there was like a, maybe an old, there was an older, like a eighth gen Glant. So, yeah. The real Big, ugly, no credit score ones? No. Seventh gen, then. The one before that. Okay. So um, the one they made a VR4 of? Yeah. VRCs? Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. Um, no Monteros. Nothing. Huh. Like, I looked in the SCV section. It was funny because I went, went in there. The guys were really nice. And I was like, oh, I, it said on row 52 you had Q45s. He's like, oh, they're back. He like showed me the map. He's like, they're back here. These are the other SUVs. I was like, well, it's a big sedan. He's like, it is. I was like, yeah. I was like, I think you're thinking of QX4. Yeah. He's like, well, I, I, I don't know. I'm not sure. Then just it'll be over here. Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know what you're talking about, but I guarantee it's there. And I was like, oh, I, I just walked down. I kind of like turned, and I got lucky. They were like right in the first row because they were they were fresh. Cool. Yeah, I, wow. I haven't seen the rust on the top of a fender like that on a, a quote-unquote modern era car before. Like, that no, was like a 70s Dodge thing. Yeah, like, it's weird. Yeah. The top of the fender across the edge of the hood. Like, it had was, to, yeah, it's on my Instagram. It had to have, have some damage to it because these cars supposedly had really thick paint and really good plating underneath it for rust prevention. Yeah, And this thing had, like, the rockers were gone. That it, fender. it looked like a 64 Impala wagon that's been sitting in the field. <laughs> yeah. For years. yeah. yeah. Uh, and strange. then interestingly, it had the discontinued Takiko replacement shocks on it that I can't get anymore and why I had to order JDM ones. But I don't know how old they are, so I'm like, those are totally not worth pulling because I yeah. already have new ones. Also, it's 10 degrees. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the, the thing's on its belly. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, it's, it's it's cool that you found them though. I'm I'm, I'm stoked for that. I mean, it was complete. Yeah. complete like light. nobody pulled anything from it. Yeah, it's that's always awesome. Race. Yeah, and that's also they're probably out there. They're yeah. I was like me, and like there's one other guy wandering around for some reason. Yeah, but, mm-hmm. and I was scoping out. There was there wasn't much else. Um, mostly newer stuff. They had a lot of GM stuff. They had a lot of GM era sobs. Okay, that's not surprising. No, mm-hmm. not surprising. A lot of minis, not surprising. Mm-hmm. But yeah, they all reach that threshold of uh, value versus repair, and uh, right, they yeah, lose that every time with that kind of stuff. Especially a GM era Saab. There, yep, they weren't known for being good. Cool yard, though. I mean, they were. It was two bucks to get in. Um, mm-hmm. Not like so. Like the only other one that's really good that I've been to lately is Brandy Brow up in Haverhill. 
they're cool because they have everything set on railroad ties, so it runs oh, cool. up in the air. But this place was just like, and sometimes uh, like the places Brad brought me to in Phoenix, they'll be up on like welded steel wheels. Mm-hmm. But these were just sitting on the ground, which is kind of a bummer. But yeah, all the ones in Phoenix are very well organized, and all the cars are up in the air. So that's how I was able hmm. to get that steering rack for the Volvo from Jordan. So fairly, fairly simply. I couldn't wow. remember if in Phoenix did they ask for stock numbers when you pulled stuff. No. Yeah, the Brandy Brown does. This place, I was like, I took pictures of the stock numbers. I was like, do you need these? He's like, no, nah, we don't. He's like, we don't keep track of any of the pull, pull uh, pick and pull stuff. I was like, all right, cool. Yeah, no, they don't hear either. They just, the car goes out there and then this, that row sits until they go row by row. So like the row goes in, you know, and then they fill the whole yard up and then they go back to that row. That row gets crushed. Then that row gets wow. refilled and they move to the next row and that row gets crushed. Then that it goes constant. So there could be a car in there that has not had one part taken off of it, but it's just its turn to get crushed and it gets crushed. Oh, so that makes me so sad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There was that 78 Colt that was out here that was really nice and we were still living in the apartment and didn't have a place to put parts. But I really wanted to take all of the sheet metal at like the doors, the hood, yeah. the fenders, and I just had no place to put it. And, you know, I finally was like, whatever, I'm going to go back and get it and I'll find a place to put it. And I went back and the car was gone. So that, oh. I was like, that all that beautiful pin straight west coast nice sheet metal right. was just crushed oh you know what's i grabbed too was they threw so the car had the bbs mesh wheels on it somebody mm-hmm. they took the wheels off of it they probably still have them i probably could have bought them but i don't really need them but they had the center caps they were in the trunk i opened the trunk they were sitting there all wow. four i was like okay so i yeah, grabbed those because yeah, I was like, I don't know. I might as well have spares for these, or even if I sell the car, I give them to the person. Because what if one falls off on the highway? It'd be super annoying to replace. I wonder so. if those are the same as the ones on the RX-7. I, we asked that. I think they are. They're very close. Yeah, they're a, they're a BBS. They're not an Inky. They're a BBS. So yeah, because the hmm. the RX-7 mesh wheels are also BBS. Yeah. What so. I didn't check in the trunk, and I was kicking myself after I left, was for the BBS wheel tool, which might not have been in there. I didn't even look at the mileage for the car I had either. But right. anyway, so yeah. So before we wrap this up, one more yeah. uh, quick question for you. Might actually not be quick. Might be long. Uh, <laughs> as the um, one of few LS swap people that we know. Yes. Um, can you still LS swap a vehicle inexpensively? Or is it too popular now and too hard to get the right stuff? Um. So... I actually, I actually put together a list a, a couple of years ago of what it cost uh, to do the LS swap that's in my 64 Impala convertible, which is a 6 liter uh, LQ9. And then I put a list together of how much it cost to LS swap my 72 Le Mans, which was an LQ4 6 liter, which is the lower compression 6 liter. And... The Le Mans was like the cheapest possible way I could do it. And I think it added up off the top of my head. I want to say it was around $1,700 to get it from like no engine to running LS six liter. Um, But that being said, I had to, I had to kind of work for that. Like when I bought the six liter, it had a broken piston in it. So I had to replace my piston and like all the things that go along with that obviously do the rings um you know i had the heads off of it and i did all kinds of new gaskets had to change the oil pan because whenever you put an ls engine in some other car you need to get some sort of custom oil pan which then involves getting an oil pan pickup and generally you like to use new gaskets when you do things and sometimes you require new bolts generally people (laughs) say you should uh, replace your head bolts Um, and all these like little things add up. So you can go buy an engine at a junkyard for like 350 bucks, but to actually get it in the car and get it functioning, you need to spend a decent amount of money. Like it just adds up and adds up. Like you buy a ECU or PCM, whatever you want to call it for a hundred bucks. And then you need to get it flashed and there's a hundred bucks. And um, you need to make an intake pipe. And so the intake pipe must, might cost, you know, 40 or 50 bucks from junk that you buy on eBay. Uh, you need to get an electric fuel pump and there's a hundred bucks. You need to get fuel hose. 
and that's all dash six an or something like that. So there's another hundred bucks. So like all these little things start adding up, and pretty soon before you know it, you're you know approaching two thousand dollars for an LS swap. And, and I'm without, sure <laughs> without like plug and play aftermarket yes. fuel injection and stuff. That's wiring yes, yourself, exactly. right? Yep. Yeah, that's that's modifying the stock harness and reusing as much as you possibly can, like reusing the the fuel pressure regulator that's on the fuel rail. Um, you know, reusing basically everything that you possibly can. And I'm sure there's going to be people out there that are like, oh, I could do it for $500. And sure, you can probably stuff it into some vehicle and make the engine run for $500, but you're not going to have anything reliable that you could actually you know, go to the grocery store and make it home and not have it leak everywhere and, you and, know, and have an exhaust system. That's ultimately what we're after. We want to have that, you know, old school yeah. car with that turnkey reliability. And that's yep. where my, my brain is. And every time right. I see an old car with that needs a motor, I'm like, oh, LS swap candidate. But then yeah. my actual brain goes, Brad, you barely finish minor projects. You're going <laughs> to LS swap a car by yourself. You <laughs> right. Know? And it just becomes one of those... I always want to do it. Never yeah. quite pull the trigger. So it is a lot of fun. Yeah. Get in. Like what I always think about is like, I want whenever I am doing something like this, I want to make sure that I can bring it to a Massachusetts inspection station and I can get an inspection sticker because I can do all the work in the world. But if I can never get an inspection sticker on my car, then all of my work is wasted because right. I can't drive it in Massachusetts. And Massachusetts is generally really strict with this stuff. So I have to like follow the rules, unfortunately. And there's other sure. states that, you know, you can run open headers all day long and get a passing inspection sticker, but this is not one of those states. So Yeah, and uh, we talk all the time about how Arizona is like super open and loose about things, yep. but uh, we we do have emissions on all cars built after 67. Um, oh, okay. So, That's so pretty straight early. pipes, yeah, it's very early, um, but straight pipes out the, uh, out the, motor would not would not pass inspection so right um i mean they only they only have to pass if you don't have collector car insurance but they do need to yeah six i think 67 is the cutoff and obviously they only have to pass for their years so putting an ls into a 68 car would probably make it pass but it would need to have some kind of exhaust and mm-hmm. be tuned well enough to not be belching smoke and not be obviously yeah. a gross polluter but yep. yeah so but yeah we, we could probably put it in a i i could buy like i don't know uh, I cut down anything that had no body panels left and put an LS in it and get mm-hmm. a plate here in Arizona, but it would just <laughs> unfortunately still need to be past emissions. So, or fortunately, right. I guess it's not a bad thing. So, right. But anyway. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, I'm always curious about it. I'm always wondering if it's like gone past that point of like, it's not cheap anymore because mm-hmm. all the good ones are gone and right. the new ones are too expensive. And, uh, you, you can't really run it on old ECU anymore. Now you have to run like, you know, a Holly right. Stiper set up, which is not a thousand dollars. And yep. What's yeah. The I mean, the, if you are going to do an LS swap, the best advice I can give you is buy a vehicle that runs that you can hear the engine run and you know, it's a good engine and then part out the vehicle. So yank the engine and transmission. If you're going to reuse the transmission and the harness and all the accessories and stuff, the mass airflow sensor, all that junk. And then part out the car because then you can sell all the parts off the car and recoup a lot of what you've paid for the vehicle. And so I've done this in the past and like I bought a truck for $400, parted it out, made like around $100 on parting it out. So I was up $100 plus I kept the engine and transmission and ECU and wiring harness. So I ended up with a free LS engine and $100 in my pocket. That's cool. Just minus labor. Yeah, minus the labor. As long as you're willing to overlook the fact that you're spending, you know, 20 hours and, you know, numerous hours on Facebook trying to sell all the junk that, you know, you don't want. Yeah, that's um, the frustrating part. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that would be my advice. Excellent. Yep. Well, where can uh, everybody follow you? Um, I would say the best the best place is just my YouTube channel, which you can find if you just search Ratty Muscle Car on YouTube, or you can go to RattyMuscleCar.com, and that'll bring it to my YouTube channel as well. And that's uh, you'll also find my Instagram there, um, and Facebook, I think. So yeah, excellent. That's me, Andrew. Anything else today? No, I don't think so. Um, excellent. 
Yeah. Oh, so a programming note. So next week, uh, if you hear the Ken Carter episode again, uh, if you've already listened to it, I apologize. If you haven't listened to it, it's a pretty fun one. And uh, it's one of our older episodes. Uh, we're taking the week off because I'll be out of town. And it'll just be easier than trying to do a remote podcast because uh, we weren't happy with the audio quality last time. So we're just going to rerun an episode. That's, so next week, don't uh, don't be alarmed if you hear an old episode. Excellent. And where can they find you, Andrew, as always? Uh, you can find me, Race and Anger, on Instagram. Race and Anger on uh, Twitter. I am... Yeah, that's pretty much it. Auto Off Topic on Instagram, Auto Off Topic Podcast on Facebook. Uh, there's Auto Off, Auto Off Topic on Twitter. Uh, and we have autooftopic.com. Um, hasn't quite, it's kind of a soft launch, but uh, it is live. Yes, there is one article on there, which I read yesterday that you wrote, Andrew, and it is very good. Cool. So, yeah. It's a good introduction to who we are if you haven't been listening for the past six years. Yeah, we're gonna let's just kind of put some more stuff up there. It's going to be to tie in so that there's a visual component to this audio only format. Um, and uh, I haven't put any new YouTube videos up. I've been so I've been trying to put more stuff on our YouTube channel, Jeremy. And I was watching mm-hmm. yours and I was like, you know what? I, I know how to do this. Yeah. And we should do it too because it's fun. Because, like, mm-hmm. it doesn't take a lot. I mean, I shouldn't say it doesn't take effort, it does take a lot of effort, actually. It takes more effort than people think. And I respect the hustle that people have to do it, like, as their main income source. Yeah, definitely. But, like, I noticed uh, I I have some videos, but I didn't do, like, I did the bulk of, like, the how-to part, but I didn't do any of the, like, other stuff. And I'm like, uh, well, I'll just throw them together <laughs> as they are. Yeah. We'll just jump right into the videos. I don't have any intros or anything for them right now, but I'll add those later on <laughs> to new videos. Yep. Because it's definitely, uh, definitely helpful to have that. Excellent. And you can find my stuff, obviously, at uh, TSISS350 on Instagram. And don't forget to follow our new Instagram page, which is exclusively scale model stuff over at uh, Scale Autocast. So, Yes, and we're working on the launch of that podcast soon. And we'll, uh, yep, I have some new equipment that I'm uh, excited to use, some new lighting and some new uh, webcam stuff. So we'll be able to use audio and visual from that podcast yeah i need to acquire one more piece and then i think we'll do a um we might sneak one into the feed for this podcast so people get it and then it'll have its own feed 100 percent. anyways uh yeah that was a great episode thanks for coming on jeremy yeah thanks for having me i really appreciate it i had a great time as always and i can't wait to do it again all right cool we'll try to do something sooner than like uh, two hundred years later, yeah. forty <laughs> episodes apart. <laughs> that sounds good. Well, hopefully, we're right. a lot of content coming up this uh, yes. end of summer, fall. Yes. So we'll see. Count hopefully. me in. Hold, hold me to that, everybody. You usually okay. you do. So hold me to this cool. one too. So as always, keep cards analog and aim for the rest. Yeah.